It's a great thing to have a guy like Ben Sennett, but as he talked about, it's a demanding position. Mm-hmm. You need more than one or two. There's no doubt. What's What's great for you? You get three ready to go, four ready to go. Yeah, I try. Well, first of all, I try to get them all in position to compete to play. Yeah. Um, feel like with what we do, we need to probably have four in any particular year that are game ready, ready to play. Yeah. Whether they all make it onto the field or not is another question, and whether you have them all available at one time is another question. You know, at different points last year, I maybe had only three of them available, um, but. That's just part of the virtue or the nature of the position with injuries that you get or different points in development. And you never forget guys develop through the spring, they develop through the summer, they also develop through the fall. So a guy that maybe wasn't in position at the beginning of last season, towards the end of the year, is like, you know what, this guy is ready to play more. I can maybe get him out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Finally, for me, you obviously spend a lot of time with Connor with, with the offensive line and the, the tie in there with the, with the tight ends. How has that been for you guys growing now for you know the time that you've been yep. here? It's been, it's been neat because I, I'm starting to really understand the terms that he wants to use, right. how, what his vision is of seeing it. When we go to install play <laughs> and we're talking, we're going over the script, he can say, hey, do you see that up there, little pack? look at the screen, see the, on the script, yep, I'll make sure that this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. We don't have to have a long, drawn-out conversation right. to make sure we're on the same page. And so that's really neat when you get that much time with someone mm-hmm. that you can kind of think of the same mind or know what they like and what they don't like mm-hmm. so that you're not working something or suggesting something that's just not going to go anywhere. It doesn't fit with the vision of what they want to do. Thanks, man. Is there, yep, no problem. Is there any more, I guess, satisfaction you get from – recruiting a guy and now being at Kansas State long enough to also see their development through yeah. the years? Yeah, that's – that's. I was telling um gentleman earlier that, uh, you know, kind of the fun thing for me with Ben was he's the first – one of the first guys I've really gotten to coach. And I kind of caught him early enough in his development that I was able to help some. These guys that are currently in, I've gotten to coach them from the day they walked on campus. Um, Swanson not, but – the younger guys I have, and so it's it's fun for me. Like I know what Garrett Oakley and Braden Lofton, Will Anseo and Andrew Metzger looked like in their senior year in high school, before they showed up, and then where their bodies have gone, and what they understand, what they looked like in their first practice, as opposed to where they're at right now, going into practice seven of spring ball. And so that's awesome for me to get to see development. I'm always trying to figure out when I'm out recruiting, when I'm doing any of that. You know, where are these guys, where are they going to go? What are their body types going to be like? What's their personality and demeanor? What's that going to be when they're 20, 21, 22 years old? Because that's the game that we're playing. And that I'm always using that feedback of seeing that development process. So it's great for me. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Is there anyone in your room where you think they were, think about where they were last year to now? It's like, geez, that's a different person right now. Yeah, I think. All of them in different dimensions are like that, right? I think Swanee's, uh, Swanee's confidence in being a player on this team and getting that 2023 season where, hey, you know what, I was in that number two spot with Ben, getting to be a guy that we can really rely on and go, that leadership and growth and development. Garrett Oakley having the confidence of getting to play a good amount this year and physically continue to develop. Braden Lofton getting to have a fall camp and a fall season where he really grew throughout the year that now he's in a physical position that he's playing with a lot more confidence when he goes in spring ball. And then the two freshmen coming off a redshirt year, you know, they were both, Metzger was heavier, but they were both 220-something pound guys, and they're in the 240s now. And they're bigger and stronger, and they're more confident with how they play. So maybe where they were a little timid on something in fall camp, now they're getting to it a lot faster and playing with, with heavy hands and hat. What, I guess been here as the tight end position has evolved a little bit also. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how... How has he adjusted that, and how is he helping these other guys now learn the coaches? Yeah, he's adjusted really well. He's a really, really smart person. So Swanee's in the engineering college. He's got great intelligence. He's got a great personality. He's probably, for me, one of the most fun guys for me to coach. Um, And he has a long memory of what things were before I got here, before Coach Klein took over the offense and now Coach Riley, that – Um, he has some of those learned lessons. Does that make sense? And so when it's time for him to speak, he can speak up in a way that he can speak from experience of something that happened of like, hey, this is why we do things this way. That's the leadership component that says, hey, you guys weren't here when things were this way in 2020 or in 2021. We're doing it this way now because we learned lessons from that. Does that make sense?